Visionaries, it's A back on your screen with another one. I hope you're all well. As you can tell from the title, this video is going to be a little bit different. If you're part of the Patreon fam, you already know that in March my auntie passed away. And to say that I feel distraught is, I don't even know if that's enough of a word. I was devastated when I found out and ever since then it's just, life is unreal. There's no other way to put it, but I thought if she's taught me anything, it's to feel, which is why this is my third time trying to do this video. Not third time today. Third time that I've sat down for hours and I tried and I cried and I tried and I stopped and I tried to take a moment. And she's taught me so much about feeling in the moment. Growing up in the culture that I have, women are meant to be strong, reliable, responsible, resilient, and feelings don't always get felt. But she was such a huge part of my life and she taught me so much about learning to love oneself. And I wanna share some of that with you today. I'm also gonna use all the AdSense from this video to go towards my three little cousins, the children that she leaves behind. There's a GoFundMe for their education. Link up here and QR code if I can find it to go here if you wanna support directly too. But watching this will be support and hopefully there's something you can take away for your authentic way. I decided instead of talking about all nine pillars of life, because we'd be here all day, there's so much that she shared with me. We're gonna focus on three themes. And within those three, I'll try to give three tips for each. As I swipe and scroll social, I swear these three topics come up all the time. Love, money, and sense of self. So let's break it down. When it comes to love and relationships, I look back and I'm like, dang, I told Auntie a lot of ish. Like, I cannot believe, but I mean, when I look back, she was the closest person to me, so she knew everything. When I say everything, I literally mean everything. Like, sometimes I think and I'm like, and she didn't judge me. She took it in and she was able to give out some good information and insight. Oh God, but sometimes I look back and I'm like, damn, like, yo. <laughs> Let's keep it light, right? One of the things I remember her telling me years ago that still rings true today is you don't go and buy Bruce fruit. And when she first told me that I must have been like 2021, 20, what are you talking about, Auntie? Because Auntie Amanda was like the queen of parables and idioms and different ways of saying things. She was always alluding to something without saying the something and then we would discuss and explain it. I love those conversations. So she'd ask me, when you go to the grocery store, what do you look for when you buy your fruit? I'm like, peaches, pineapples, pears, and plums. Tell me when my birthday comes. No, when you go to buy a fruit, like what are you looking? Oh, if it's like an apple, am I getting a red delicious or a golden? Then I want it to be, you know, bright and I want it to be crunchy, don't have any like soft spots on it, doesn't look damaged, demented. If it's a banana, I don't want it to be too ripe because I want it to ripen my house. She's like, right, so why wouldn't you go out and pick a man? Like you pick your fruit. Why would you go and pick bruised fruit? <laughs> Mic drop. She clarified that we are all bruised fruit. So she wasn't just saying the men that I dealt with were bruised fruit, which I mean, she's saying don't go seeking out worse when you can seek out better. And she would break down all the reasons why I should go looking for a different type of guy. And looking back, she was completely right. It's not to say that the men I were with weren't good people, they just weren't good to me. And I can just say that looking back, it is what it is. But when you're picking a partner, pick it like you pick your fruit. You want the best and you want them for different reasons and seasons. Like sometimes I pick bananas that aren't gonna ripen for a couple days because I already have a bunch in the fridge for my smoothies. Other times I want a banana because I'm gonna make banana bread in a couple days. Not to say that you want a more rotten banana person at a different time of your life, but at different stages you desire different things, but at the end you should want the best for yourself and for what you're trying to make out of your life. Another good piece of advice that she gave me, not as shady, was whatever you seek for in someone else, you're usually not giving yourself. And this was in one of my past long-term relationships where I was desiring validation. Guys, I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I wanted so badly. I was vying for this guy's attention. And it's there's nothing like being in a relationship vying for their attention. It's not like the courtship phase. You're like in a long-term relationship and you're still like, I just want to feel seen. I realized in staying in that relationship, I was depleting all of those feelings for myself. Discussing with Auntie Amanda, she taught me that all of us, whether it is a romantic relationship, a friendship, or a family tie, we are looking and seeking out something that maybe we haven't been able to teach ourselves, to give ourselves, to edify. I was looking for validation when I should have been figuring out and finding out ways to validate myself. 
Years later, thank the Lord, I finally figured it out and I'm able to validate myself. She also took it up a notch and said a lot of what you seek for in yourself, people can sense you're seeking it out. It's not necessarily needy, but it gives an air, if you know what I mean. When you start to edify yourself and you got that, it gives off a different energy. And although I'm not into LOA, law of attraction, but I still believe that energy can neither be created or destroyed, it just disperses, right? And that goes for more ways than one. When you exude an energy of, I'm whole, I'm looking for someone who is whole or is working towards whole, you foster and find different relationships. She also taught me that people come into your life, again, this transcends romantic relationships, to show you something on your path. And maybe they're not meant to be on their path. I think one of the hardest things she ever told me is you can love someone from afar. And I didn't want to listen to her. I was not hearing it when she said it. But when I realized it, I thought that was actually the highest sense of love, to realize, again, this person is not a bad person, but they're not good for me. And I love them enough to say that this is not going to work. And there's no loss in letting it go. In fact, it's liberating for both of us. The last tip I'll share today that she gave me when it comes to love is silence is key. And this is a stealth move, honestly. She told me, always be the girl that got away. And I'm like, auntie, for real, for real. There is nothing better than being a good girlfriend and a man knows he messed up and he can't spin the block because you're no longer there. Wow, <laughs> okay, but seriously though, she also furthered past that point of, you keep your dignity when you're not trying to find closure. This whole trying to get your lick back business, you never really feel good. And if you do, I got a therapist I can recommend for you. And this sentiment that if you're trying to find resolve by finding answers, figuring out the why and the psychology of that, all of that energy could be put towards healing and helping you move forward. When you think about life, it's a continuum. There's nothing we can do to go back in the past. Trust me, if I could, I would. Not to relive it, but to undo certain things and speak to certain people again and also get my vision back. But other than that, you can keep the past. We have to go forward and trying to figure out something that no longer is for us, keeps the past in the present, but pulls us in a perpetual state of stagnation. Like there's no good that comes from it. She helped me work through breakups and blunders and foolishness to the point where I have been through things, but I don't wear my trauma like that. And unless I actually tell you, and sometimes I tell the Patreon fam too, too much, you would never know it because she's helped me get to a place of healing Healing is a process. It's not a I'm healed, I'm sanctified. It's a process that you have to put into practice your entire life. Okay, okay, okay. I feel like I'm on a roll and I'm feeling good. I'm not too emotional, thank the Lord. I'm trying to make this like a celebration of life instead of like a formal solemn thing. So theme number two is money. After all, it makes the world go around. She spoke so much about money. She understood the importance of financial freedom. She also understood the importance of financial literacy. I was 17 years old and she gave me a pale yellow book with the title, The Richest Man in Babylon. If I can find the audiobook version on YouTube, I'll link it down below because this is a game changer. It's a short read, it's a parable. Depending on how you're spiritual, you may take it or leave it, but there's one sentiment in there that is stuck in my mind since the first time I read it. And it is to save 10% of everything you make this idea of paying yourself first. There's so many other things in that book that stood out to me, but out of everything, that was major key. I mean, we could talk about the idea of reaping what you sow, making sure that your money works for you after you worked for it. There's nothing that compares to the security that comes from having a safety net. Listen, I lived through a panorama. Sometimes you have to stop and think, you went through 2019 to 2021. Those years were crazy. They're gonna write that in the history books and we're gonna look back and be like, we lived through that. Those were some very uncertain times and I never once worried about my finances. One, because I live in Canada and they were giving 2K away. But two, because listen, 2K is not enough for rent, let's be honest. Two, because I had a good nest egg. I was able to live my life and feel comfortable and not concerned about the state of things. I mean, other things were a concern, of course. But money, I've only had three times in my whole life that I've actually been stressed out about money. Two, 
I think I was 21. I used to be one of those people, between 14 and 17, couldn't keep a coin. I used to go to Urban Planet, Sirens and Stitches, spending like it was going out of fashion. I mean, it literally was because it was fast fashion. That was like our Forever 21 back in the day. I think, now that I think about it, the book she gave me was Subtle Shade. She was probably like, I see you spending, so read this book and we're gonna talk about it. That book changed my life. I wouldn't be able to travel to the place I travel or live on my own being visually impaired if it wasn't for the time she took to not only buy the book but discuss the sentiments in it to continue having conversations about finances and what it means to invest all the different ways to accumulate and accrue income and what interest is and it's just there's been times where I've had conversations with financial advisors and they're like wow you're very knowledgeable yeah Auntie Amanda did that <laughs> Battery break, my camera died. I think it's saying I chat too much. On to the second thing Amanda taught me when it comes to money. Simply that it's a relationship and the way we spend money says a lot about ourselves. In the general sense, she spoke of the idea that we all buy into our image by the brands that we buy. And when she told me this at a young age, I was just like, think about it. Everything from the brand of bottled water that we buy to the car that we drive says something about what we believe about the brand which says a lot about the beliefs of ourselves. It's not that you have to buy a Versace belt or something for you to try to exude something. You know, it's the charities that you donate to that say a lot about your beliefs or the places that you travel to that show a lot about your interests. Every little thing that we spend our money on, we're literally investing into an image and identity of something that we want to cleave to or a way we want to improve our lives. And when you start to realize that, you spend your money a lot differently. I can't believe I'm gonna tell you guys this story, but hey, I think for the sake of driving this idea home, I'm gonna embarrass myself a little bit. It was one night not too long ago, maybe a few years ago, where her and I were having one of our countless conversations and mid-conversation she said, you know, your hair is beautiful, you can do your makeup, you're put together, you have good style, but you're broken inside. I'm like, Damn, read me for the filth. And I was just shook. <laughs> like the fact that I'm admitting it to you guys, I'm still shook. Cause I'm just like, whoa, this went way left real quick. But the many hours and days and weeks and months and years since she said that and it's replayed in my mind rent free, like a cassette tape over and over and over again. Why am I using a cassette tape as an analogy? Yo, I'm aging myself. When I tell you, I was like, okay, cause she, she knew me better than anyone else on this planet. So I was just like, what do you mean, auntie? You put so much into how you present, but not into how much you perceive. And when she said that, it made more sense to me because so much of what we do day to day, especially in consumerist society we live in, is buying into, literally buying into a sense of ourselves. When we choose to spend our cash on certain things, what it's saying about how we see ourselves and we see the world. Like, you know the idea that time is money. Some of us spend money for convenience, other of us spend money for status, some of us spend money for experiences. And I'm not here to judge which of the three you spend your money for. Some people spend money on making other people's lives better or spending on their loved ones. And there's no wrong or right because we're all figuring out life. But when you just sit with yourself and you realize, why am I spending this money? What do I feel like I'm gonna get out of buying this new dress? Or what do I expect to feel if I go all the way to Morocco? When you have those moments and you actually sit with yourself and you're like, okay, I love me some Fenty Beauty, but what am I really trying to get from Rihanna when I buy this lip gloss? It changes the way you view everything, not just yourself, the whole world. So I'm gonna leave that where it is because I feel like that's its own video in itself. Moving on to the third theme, sense of self. I'm gonna try not to get emotional about this, but the first thing that came to mind is that Auntie was the first person to see me when I felt like no one saw me. And I mean that in every sense of the term, and I mean it quite literally. When I started to lose vision, she was the one that took me to get my first two sets of glasses. Years later, when the Stargust gene kicked in and I started to lose vision, like the situation I have now, because those are two different things. I was nearsighted for a couple of years, and now I'm dealing with vision loss in a whole different sphere. She was there for all of it. And there have been times that I haven't admitted to you guys, but I admitted to her that I'm just like, I don't wanna be blind anymore. I just, 
would break down crying and she's like, you sound like a helpless child. I wish I could just do something for you. If I could do anything in the world, I would give you a cure. The fact that she was listening was already enough for me because I just, I hope that no one watching this feels what I feel, but I fear that a lot of you do. And this has a lot less to do with losing vision and a lot more to do with living life. There are so many things that will happen to you in your life and you'll question why. And it's not just a why me because I'm not sitting here talking to you guys like someone else should be blind or why am I living this life? Although I do wonder sometimes like, what the hell did that gene looking at 19 and not 90? Like, hello. The why of it all, like what am I supposed to learn and why is this so challenging? She always said like you were made for this and it always scared me so much because it's like, how do you see something? Mm. She just had a way of seeing people and being at her funeral, it made me realize that she gave that gift to everyone she met. Mm. Her funeral, just speaking to people, seeing the outpouring of love, I just realized that she's still here because every person that she met that can speak on who she was and what they felt in her presence, that was her essence. It's, it's astounding to see that as much as she poured into me, she literally did for everyone she knew. I don't wanna say obligated because I think that's the wrong word, but I feel like it's my duty to be the best I can be because of all that she instilled in me. And I don't know if you have a person in your life that has made you feel that way. And I hope they're still here so you can give them a hug today. Whenever I have a triumphant moment, whenever I have a success or I achieve a goal, big or small, she's there. Cause it was her encouraging words. And of course it's not just her, it's my mom, it's my dad, it's my stepdad, it's my little brother. Especially if you've gone through depression as I have in the past. You get in your mind and you think that, you know, you don't matter or why are you here or why is life this way or when is it going to get better? And she was always there to encourage and inspire. <sighs> we good. We good over here. Are you good? I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I shouldn't apologize, but it's such a Canadian thing to apologize for everything. Wrapping it up, wrapping it up, wrapping up. Something else she taught me with sense of self is that we're on this path with the purpose of discovering ourselves and we can find that purpose in our careers if we're so blessed to, or we can use our careers to fund and fuel our passion projects. But the whole purpose and discovery of life is exactly that, self-discovery. Every moment of every day, with people or without people, is for the betterment of yourself. And as spirits having a human experience to go on to wherever and whatever you believe, whether it's just click off and you're out like a light, whether you ascend and you chill in heaven, or you transcend and you regenerate and have to do math again. I really hope that's not the case because I'm not trying to do multiplication tables again. Whatever it may be, this moment is the only reality. And I have spoken on being present because that's where the power is. And especially with many of the many losses I've dealt with. Because listen, I've told you before and I will admit it again. Vision loss is not the greatest loss I've gone through. It is the most continuous one. 14 years of losing vision. It's a sick, twisted joke but I have dealt with things that have hurt way more than vision loss itself. Being present and realizing you can't go back, you can live in the past and perpetuate and think and relive and refeel, but it's not real. And the future hasn't happened yet because it's always in the forward. So even when you dream of where you're gonna be next year, by the time next year comes is a present. Next year is already next year. Having that as a mindset has been able to help me work through and process so many things. And I tell you guys time and time again, that's where your power is. There's a book by Eckhart Tolle and it was a hard ass read. She gave it to me when I was like 25. I finished it by the time I was 27. Yes, it took me two years to read the rotten book. It's called The Power of Now if you haven't heard it already. It is a good book. It's just a hard read, especially if you're not into the airy fairy woo-ish. There's a part where he says, I can't live with myself any longer. And he's like, who's the I and who's the myself? Once you start to get to these esoteric questions of who is the self? Who is this person having this experience? And what have you created and crafted in your mind? This, this experience and this existence is so much more than what you think it is. This perfectly leads into the last thing I'll share today. She had taught me this many years ago, but it still rings true. The mind is a powerful tool. 
And a lot of what we do and what we feel and see and even say is a result of our subconscious. She always said it was running in the background like a software. Nowadays, I kind of think of it like apps. You gotta swipe up to get rid of them so that the whole system runs better. There's a lot of things we tell ourselves about life that we've told ourselves in the past that protect us, but they don't serve us today. The example I'll give you with the one she gave me was we were talking about something, I think like with a friend or something. And she's like, you're telling yourself a story to continue this narrative, to continue being who you are. Can you tell there's a pattern here of her just telling me about myself? But I needed it. And sometimes you need that person who's gonna do it for you. And I'm like, what do you mean, Auntie? And she's like, you recreated this situation to have the exact same circumstance, to play the exact same victim. I'm like, I am not playing a victim. She's like, not in the sense of like, this person didn't do you wrong, because I'm always the first. It is the worst habit to have. When something happens, I'm always like, what could I have done different? Why did I let this person play me? What did I do to enable and engage this unnecessary behavior? It's unhealthy, don't do it, I don't recommend it. In this circumstance though, she was saying that a lot of times we don't even realize that we're playing into a plot so that when we look back at the storyline, it's like, ah, I knew it. Some would say self-fulfilling prophecy. I would say more like you feel that life is a certain way by what you've been raised to believe, what you've come to believe and what you think you know to believe. And then you go and you perpetuate these things by how you present yourself or you know, where you decide to live or what you decide to eat or who you decide to spend time with. Like all these things play a huge role in the output. Realizing that a lot of things, especially when it comes to relationships, but also when it comes to careers, I'm just gonna throw that in there. We tell ourselves something and we might not even know we're telling ourselves that, but we also might actually hear ourselves saying something about what we're experiencing. And it's not to say it's not true, but we're making it true by creating the conditions so that it can be true, to serve some security purpose, like a safety blanket. Whatever you've been telling yourself, whatever limiting belief you have falls into this category. It works on the other side too with people who have big dreams that almost err on the side of delusion. When you tell yourself that you deserve this and the world was made for you, somehow it works out in a way that favors you. So when you start to realize that the mind is like a software running in the background and you're aware and you catch it by being present, and you see yourself for all that you are and you have a good relationship with money understanding what it can do for you when you make it work for you while pouring into people especially your loved ones that are aligned with you and have the same core values of you you'll be all right you see what i did there try to wrap it all up into one this is so unreal like there's part of me that wants to call her when i finish this video and be like hey auntie can you believe i made this video about you but i i, I can't so I'm gonna have an interesting time editing Alicia's probably gonna break down while watching this. But filming Alicia kept it together to the best of her ability. So that is that on that. I hope that you took something away. If you could let me know down below what you learned from this video or anything you'd like to add from any of the sentiments my auntie shared, that would make my day. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.